is my life. Amen. I don't come to church to play on a Sunday. I come to change people's lives by the power of the Holy Ghost. And I realize we have one movement. And uh, this morning in Johannesburg, one of the, it, it will come out in the very near, very near future. One of the great, I mean, MMA fighters got saved this morning through the live link in Johannesburg. One of the, the number one MMA fighters. If I say his name, all of you will know him, but I won't say his name for television's sake and, and, and for publicity sake. Radically saved. I mean, this guy, I mean, he, he's as rough as they get, and he got saved this morning. You know, it's amazing how the tough sinners like our ministry. Maybe the Nancy Bamsies don't like our ministry. We're after sinners. We're after the lost. Amen. So on Wednesday night, we're having our harvest event in Peter Maritzburg with Pastor Johan and, and uh, Sandra. Peter Maritzburg, first time I'll be doing a harvest event in Peter Maritzburg. We're very excited. This last week we had... Uh, our, the opening of Pastor Glenn's new building in Durban, a 2,000 seater facility, full house, many, many people got saved. So we we're very excited about what's happening in CRC across the country. Come on, let's give God a praise offering. So tonight, <clears throat> Pretoria, a few months, that building will be open. I hear you were blessed with Pastor Ellen Bag this morning. Um, I'll be there next uh, Sunday. Um, somebody said the other day, I hear Pastor Art is live in the church. I said to them, well, when I preach through the link, does that mean I'm dead? Does that mean when you watch the World Cup soccer or the Curry Cup rugby and you have to watch a live link that suddenly the players are dead? No. Technology magnifies. We're a generation of technology. Amen. Just look at your Twitter. Look at your, your Facebook. Look at how you look at television. You watch movies. So technology is part of our lives and technology is part of the church. So welcome tonight all the churches. Pretoria. Johannesburg, Cape Town, Stellenbosch, Kimberley, Durban, Belito, Welcome, George, Kroenstad, Nell, Spread, Polokwane, Uppington, Port Elizabeth, Bethlehem, Peter Maritzburg, Richards Bay, Khabarone, Lady Bron, Rustenburg, then our live stream viewers, and then faithchannel.com, and of course our television audience. Come on, you from Bloomingdale. Let's give all these people a warm welcome in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, we've already had a great time. I want you to open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 16. How many of you are ready for the word? Somebody said young people say they're not getting enough scriptures. So I'm going to give you like 50 scriptures tonight. Are you ready? Are you ready? Because we do believe the Bible, right? And if you're coming to the evening services and you want more word, then come to the morning service as well. And if you want more word, then come to the 7.30 service, the 9 o'clock service, the 11 o'clock service, the 1 o'clock service, and the 6 o'clock service. There are five services you can come to on a Sunday. You can come eat five times on a Sunday. And then Wednesday you go to home cell and you get the word of the Lord. Amen. I want to talk to you very briefly for a couple of hours tonight on the influence and the power of relationships. In Matthew 16, 18, Jesus said, I will be, and I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I want to focus tonight on the local church, something that is a non-negotiable in every believer's life. Jesus said, I will build my church. Oftentimes people come and they say, Pastor, what is God doing? What is the word of the Lord for 2013? Well, it's the same word of God that he gave to Peter. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against my church. Many people don't have an understanding of the church. People think the church is a building. The church is a place with a steeple and a tower. The church is a place with a sign outside that says, Still the Kerk. Nothing can be further from the truth. The building we build is not the church. The beautiful building we build in uh, Pretoria is not the church. The new building we open in um, Durban is not the church. You are the church. I said you are the church. You, my brother, and you, my sister, are the church. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. He's not building political organizations. He's not building governments. He's not building businesses. He's building his church. Whatever is not in the church of Jesus Christ is not part of what God is doing in planet earth today. You can say amen. So your relationships in life will either be a blessing or be a curse to you. They will either strengthen you or weaken you in this journey of Christianity. Good relationships will take you up the ladder of success in life. Bad relationships will take you down the ladder. We all need inspiring relationships, as I said this morning. People that can inspire us to be bigger and better. People that can show the way 
that we have to go. At the same time, we all have to get rid of toxic relationships. You all know what toxic relationships are. People that are in the church, but they're not quite Christian. People that the Bible says that are filled with bitterness and filled with worldliness. You know, this is very smelly. I don't know what they put in yeah. But that's how many people have become. People have become toxic. And if we allow these toxic people into our lives and they begin to spill over us. Come here, my good brother. You can come here. Oops. Everybody knows what's going to happen. I'll buy him a new shirt. Don't worry. The Bible says we have to... We have to run with people who love God out of a pure heart. And we have to avoid people that are filled with worldliness and bitterness and resentment. People that weaken us in this journey of Christianity. In 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33, the Bible says, Evil communications corrupt good morals. Amen. I guess it's not the So you get a lot of people that... <laughs> You get a lot of people that spill their stuff into our lives. A lot of people that puke. And we all know how it smells where somebody vomited. We all know the stench and the smell of people that... that I love my carpets. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Thank God I'm not drunk in the Holy Ghost tonight. <laughs> Like, drink, 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 drink. <laughs> There's a lot of people who go around spilling their toxic waste into our lives. People that don't love God the way that you love God. And I want to tell you tonight, we're not better than people in the world, but we are different to people in the world. You better believe it. So you cannot afford to hang out with a worldly guy and allow that worldly guy to dump his waste into your body. Amen. I just want to see if you don't pay attention. You're not twittering somebody. You're writing my message. Watch it. I'm going to see what you're all busy with. Yes? Uh huh? Yes? Yes? Uh -huh. <laughs> Evil communications corrupt good morals. What you allow into your life. The people you allow into your life will determine how you will run this race. If you allow worldly, carnal people that don't love God into your life and you don't protect your relationships, they will put their garbage upon your life. You're not a, a garbage can. You're not a waste dump. You're a child of God. The Bible says you were bought with a price. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are in this world, but you are not of this world. And one of the critical things that will determine how high you go on that ladder, whether you will finish your race and hear Jesus say one day, well done, good and faithful servant, are the relationships in your life. So you'll get somebody that phones you on a Friday night and says, are you lonesome tonight? You say, yes. Or they Facebook you, or they text you, or they SMS you. And the same guy is sending the same message to 10 lonely girls waiting for the one to take the bait. What are you doing tonight? And he just pushes the button, sends the same message to 10 girls, and two of them say, well, I'm not doing anything. Well, do you want to go to ba 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 Do you want to go to ba ba Yeah, if it's to win souls. But I'm just sitting with you, listening to your worldly conversation. The things I used to do, I don't do anymore. This is real. This is life. Not everybody who started with me is still in this journey. When I got saved, there were people that were more talented than me, more gifted than me, and more called than me to the ministry. But they would never protect their relationships. They would never draw a line when it came to toxic relationships. When you study great people in the Bible, you will see many of them fell short because of relationships. 
allowing wrong relationships. And sometimes a wrong relationship can be a philosophy you hear over a CD or over a, 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 a message you download or a book that you read and you read the wrong thing and you open yourself to evil communication. The next minute you don't believe in the local church. The next minute you sit outside of the local church because you are not protecting the communication that you're allowing to your life. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, guard your heart more than anything, for out of it flow the issues of life. How does the devil get to your heart? Through people. How does God get to your heart? Through people. How does God talk to you? Through people. How does the devil deceive you? Through people. People dumping their garbage on you. People communicating their life or their message to you. At your work. As a young person, somebody that says something that makes you feel inferior, unworthy, and the next minute you carry pain, you've allowed what they say to influence your life and your future. You're not protecting your heart. As the Bible says, you know David, when he came to the battleground, when his brothers despised him, the Bible says he walked away from them. Sometimes we have to walk away from people. Sometimes we have to push the delete button on Facebook. Sometimes we have to erase the name that is on our SMS. Oh, come on in Jesus' name. Sometimes we have to say to the brother, I'm not going to have tea with you again. Because last time all you could do was gossip about the pastor. Last time you invited me for breakfast and all we had for breakfast was my pastor. <laughs> and you're sitting there, oh shame, oh shame. And all he's doing is, whoops. <laughs> well, you told me it's going to get clean, right? <laughs> all he does is, I just want to tell you. terrible <laughs> yuck 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 that's exactly what happens you puke on other people you puke on yourself as well <laughs> amen you mess other people's lives up you mess your own life up you may think you're glorifying God but you're not glorifying God and you may not be talking about people's offenses but you carry that smell you carry it. Smell me. You carry it. And whoever you touch gets exactly the same smell. Amen. Whoever you touch gets the same smell. <laughs> ah. Just no joy. Oh, sir, tear. Well, somebody puked on you. Somebody told you their issue. Let me talk to you about my issue. The issue I have with Christianity. The issue I have with the church. Issues. And they pollute people. Worldly people pollute Christians. Do I smell nice? Smell. Smell. Is it a deodorant you would advise? That's not sweat, by the way. That is a sane. <laughs> so many Christians have become toxic because they never protected their relationships. I'm talking about worldliness, climbing the ladder, innocent, busy living for God, and somebody above them is spilling their waste on them. Somebody over there is spilling their waste on them. We have to choose our relationships very carefully. Listen to me, very, every young person in this place. When I got saved, God spoke to me very, very clearly. For seven years, I never heard God talk to me. All God said to me when I just got saved was three things. Number one, God said to me, submit to my pastor. Pastor Goodyear. He was my pastor. Little church of about 80 people. That's where God planted me. Second thing God told me was go to Bible school. Study the word. Third thing God told me was be in a home cell. That's where my Christian journey started. Connecting with the right man of God, planted in the right church, and building relationship in a home cell. Because you're not going to be a strong Christian outside of a home cell. 
life group, call it what you want. You're not going to be a strong Christian because the philosophy of the New Testament church is in the church celebration and in the home cell. So down there in Cape Town, if you want to be a super strong Christian, you have to be part of a local church and you have to be in a home cell where you share your life with other people. Come on, somebody say amen and give God a praise offering. Hallelujah. Come on, no man is an island unto himself. Everybody needs people around them. In Mark chapter 3, 14 and 15, the Bible says Jesus chose 12 to be with him that he might send them forth. You will study the pattern throughout the New Testament that believers were planted in the apostles, under the apostles' doctrine. They didn't listen to every CD and every tape and every bishop and every prophet who called himself a prophet. Today, every second person is a prophet and they profit no one, by the way. You know, I meet people all across the country and they have fancy dress and I'm apostle prophet. I'm apostle teacher bishop. I'm, I'm, I'm this and they have three people that follow them. If people don't follow you, you're merely out for a stroll. You're not leading anybody. You're not building anybody. You are not your title. So if we are going to grow, we have to stay in the body. We have to be attached, as I said this morning, with this thing that we're going to talk about tonight. The cord of love. A cord that is never broken. And we have to allow people, leaders that God places over us to bring the word of God like tonight, like Sunday morning in every pulpit. The Bible calls the word, the water. In Ephesians chapter 5, the church, which is the body of Christ, also known as the bride of Christ. The Bible uses water to wash you. So every time the preacher preaches, he washes the stink off of you. I'm glad to see you don't, you're not fat as a young person. That's a good thing. Amen. <laughs> Every time, give me some more water, please. Come on. Every time we preach the word of God, give me a bottle. Give me 10 bottles. Give me a bottle. Mark will be bottle as a believer. You know, go, Every time we preach the word of God, Jesus uses us as ministers through the word of God to wash you and to, to rub out the spots and the, the blemishes and the preacher has to preach a little bit and he, and he, and he, and he washes out this spot over there. Oops, I, the spot over there. And okay, let's do it like this. He washes and he sees there's a blemish over there. He washes him, washes him, washes him, washes him. We all need to do bath in the word, amen. We all need a bit of the word. <laughs> oh dear. You need to get rid of the toxic waste. Get rid of the naysayers. Get rid of the worldly influences. You want to plan to last this life? I'm going to say it again. You better select your relationships very carefully. You want to date a girl that's in the house of God. Plant it. You want to date a guy that's in love with Jesus Christ. Not think, I'm going to get him saved and then, and then, then he'll be in love with Jesus Christ. No, he's going to take you away from God. So if he doesn't want to get saved, honey, you can't marry him. We're talking about lasting. Donkey. Come on, let's give him a big hand. Amen. <laughs> so let's read tonight 1 John chapter 3. Just a few verses from the Bible tonight. Don't worry, he's fine. We'll take care of his clothes and everything else. Amen. I hate dirty shoes. It's the one thing I can't handle. <laughs> My shoes messed up. In any case. 1 John chapter 3. Verse 1. The church. The body of Christ. What is God building? What is the church? What is Christianity all about? What keeps us together? What makes us different from people in the world? Not a fish on your car or letterhead. Not your Shandai Hyundai. But it's love. Everybody say love. love. Say it again. Say it's love. love. Loving like people in the world cannot love. Because in the world people love up to a point. In the church, we love endlessly. We believe. We forgive. We never turn her back. We never judge. We never point a finger. 
We never accuse. Because Satan is the accuser of the brethren. We never talk about a brother negatively. Never. I said never. We build. You can't build and break. Jesus said, I will build my church. The way we build is with our words. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, talking about a marital relationship between a husband and a wife. In the message Bible, it says, his words evoke her beauty. His words. Build her or deflate her. His words. With your words, you bless or you curse. With your words, you love or you hate. With your words, you, you build or you break down. Your words. And if you break somebody else down in the church, it's like taking a, 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 a knob kitty and hitting yourself. When you hurt any part of the body, because you are part of the body. When you talk about somebody else, it's like taking a, a, a something and hitting yourself all the time. When you break somebody else down, it's like breaking yourself down. You are then part of that body. God doesn't have two bodies. He has one body, the church, which is expressed in the local church. So we don't talk about another church. We thank God for every local church in every city. We thank God for every duomeny, every pastor, every bishop, every reverend. We thank God for every part of the body. Amen. amen. Come and say a big amen, CRC. Amen. So we are not better than other parts of the body. We are not better than other local churches. We are different. We have an assignment and a redemptive purpose. And God will place the right people in this vision who share the same redemptive purpose and then you better put your roots down and you better be where God has placed you. You can't hop, 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 be a church hopper. You need to get planted in the house of God. Say amen. amen. So I want to make it clear. Because when we say CRC is the place to be, we don't see CRC is the only place. We don't say CRC is better. We say for us, who share the same vision, CRC is the place to be. That is it. If Rhema is the place to be for you, God bless you. See you in heaven. I ain't going to stand next to the road and talk to you. I'm on a mission. That's what Jesus said to Peter. When Peter said, what about John? Jesus said, don't worry about John. You follow me. You get better busy with business. So yes, we're very purpose driven in CRC. Because we have a mandate which is to plunder hell and populate heaven. He doesn't mean we compete with other churches. We recognize every part of the body. We thank God for every church. But we're very purpose driven. As my hand is. My hand is my hand. Certain places my hand doesn't reach. Amen. Certain places my foot don't get to. One body... So I, I'm not going to go, oh, pastor, there's a meeting over there for Christians. Go over there. No, my foot doesn't have to get to my shoulder to express unity. It doesn't. As long as my foot is attached to the ankle, that's all fine. So when we talk about underkerklik, underkerklik bestaan nie. Luister vir my baie duidelik. Underkerklik bestaan nie. Die woord bestaan nie in die Bible nie. Die enigste woord wat bestaan is kerk. Kerke. Die kerke in Galatia. The churches. And every church has an elder, an overseer, a bishop. Every church. And every believer must be planted in a church. Nie ek is geroep vir die lichaam, interkerkelijk nie. Oopie doe, pie doe, pie doe. Nee, jy wil nie onder gesag wees nie. Dis al. Jy noem jouself a profeet, maar jy is onder geen gesag nie. Wat so profeet is jy? And as I said in the third service this morning, those who call themselves prophets, and I believe in the prophets ministry, Pastor Clive stands in the prophetic ministry, where is he now, raptured, huh? closer to Jesus in the media department, he's the prophet, so he's in heaven, amen. Pastor Andre Smith can enter, you're neglecting that gift, you have a prophetic office upon your life that you neglect, sit as an intercessor, stands prophetic, etc. So we don't elevate titles in this church, but we recognize titles, we recognize them. What amazes me always is, that people who blow in and blow out always target the business people. Why don't they go to the shepherd? <laughs> Why don't they go to the township and target the shepherd boy? That's exactly what Samuel did. He wasn't interested in Saul's money. <laughs> it's amazing how we want to always target what we think God targets. I told my pastors, never tell me again. They, somebody said to me years ago, they said to me, oh, a quality couple joined the church. I said, define that. What is a quality couple? Quality? Quality what? 
Huh? They drive what? A BMW, so they're quality? They have a business, so they're quality? And the person that climbs on a bus from the squatter camp, he's not a quality person? Huh? That's your saying in my work. It's a question. What makes you a quality person? What? You play for the first team rugby? Well, if you're full of yourself, God will go beyond you and without you. He said to King Saul, while you were small in your own eyes, did not the Lord anoint you and make you leader of his people? But now you are building monuments for yourself. You listen to no one. So God said, I'll find another person. And he doesn't go to the palace. He never does. He never goes to the place of prominence. He goes to the desert. <laughs> he goes to the wilderness. Where most of you started. As young people. Now you Springbok rugby players. You're doing great. But don't forget where it all started. When you were nobody. When you were small in your own eyes. God came. Now that you're on the ladder of success. And now that you're scaling. And you're going higher in life. Don't forget. That you received your salvation in the church. You received your vision in the church. You married your wife in the church. You received the blessing of God in the church. Don't forget where the blessing came into your life when you climbed the ladder of success. Do not forget. Oh, come on, give God praise a little bit better than that in Jesus' name. I believe this generation will do it better than any other generation. You will not forget what God has done for you. Because sadly, most people can handle failure. Very few people can handle true success. Because when you're very successful, the tendency is to be filled with pride and filled with yourself. And nobody says anything to me. Sad, sad, sad. When the big eye returns and you hear it in conversation. That when people were nothing, they were humble, didn't miss the church, didn't have an effort to raise their hands. The Bible says, beware that you forget the Lord your God. That you said, my power and the might of my might hath gained me this wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that gives you the power to get wealth. That purpose he may establish his covenant. The purpose of God is still to establish his covenant. God will do it through the local church. No other way. God's not going to do it outside of the church. God will do it through the church. Because Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Oh, come on, give God praise for the church. All over South Africa, come on in Jesus' name. You need to be planted in the local church somewhere in relationship and be aware that the enemy will try and lure you out of the house of God through deceit, through lies, to isolate you. Because he knows if he can isolate you, he will annihilate you. Watch National Geographic. The strongest buffalo bull alone, it's a matter of time, and he's taken out. A lion exactly the same. The mightiest of animals cannot survive by themselves. How do you think you can survive by yourself? You cannot. Because it's a matter of time. As a young person. I saw how many of my friends not lost. I'm not cynical. I'm talking to a generation that has to understand there are certain non-negotiables if you want to finish one day. And one of them is you better be planted in a church somewhere for years and years and years and years and years and years. You better be under authority somewhere. You better share your life with other Christians who can talk into your life when you don't want somebody to say anything to you. Not just talk to me when you feel like it. But sometimes you have to be spoken to when you don't feel like it. You need people over you in the Lord, not your peers. People over you who can sit you down and say, Brother Johnny... Your ego is becoming mighty big. <laughs> Brother Johnny, you used to come to church every Sunday twice. Now we see you now and again. And you actually listen to somebody speaking into your life. This is not a suggestion, Christianity. This is how we live. The Bible says God tempers the body together. We all, or we should all, have people over us. Since the day I got saved, I've always had a man of God, or at least three men of God, that can sit me down and talk in my life. Not ask permission to talk, tell me. Even now. The telephone can ring now, and I will run if my pastor wants me. I'll run. My, my staff is the witness. I'll run. 
three men in South Africa that can sit me down anytime and say, this is out of line, I'll get it right. And I'll get it right without talking back. Two more international people. Five people that I submit to. You know, when my pastor died, listen to me carefully. I was living in Lady Brain. Got the telephone call, two o'clock in the morning. It was like you shot me. I fell to the ground. It was the worst news I ever received. A man of God that was my pastor for 11 years. Did he make mistakes? Yes, we all make mistakes. Was he perfect? No. Who is? Let's put you under the spotlight. Let's have a go at you, Grootbeck. Amen. Pat Foley phoned me two o'clock in the morning. I was a pastor in Lady Brain. Two o'clock in the morning, I pick up the telephone. Those days, we didn't have cell phones. I pick up the telephone, and uh, he says to me, Pastor George just died. I fell to the ground like I was shot. Just bam, my pastor dead. Today, people kill their, today people kill their pastors with their words. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the, across the country. Where people don't protect the man of God, who is the voice of God, who is the, is the way that God will lead you. People don't protect the man of God. Satan tries to assassinate the man of God. And me, as a child of God, already I was a pastor. I felt naked. For the first time in my life, as a Christian, I felt naked. Because I knew what it meant. I had no spiritual covering. I was naked. And I prayed to God. I said, Lord, I need a spiritual leader. God gave me three. Eddie O'Neill, Pastor Chris Fenter, and Pastor Ed Raybert. Those three men and Tim Salmon, the late, uh, Tim Salmon, those four men became role players in my life. That I never made a decision without consulting with each one of them. When I came to Bloemfontein, Pastor Ed Raybert called me. He said to me, Art, you need to go to Bloemfontein. I said, I know God spoke to me. Eddie O'Neill phoned me. He said to me, Art, you need to go to Bloemfontein. I said, I know God spoke to me. Tim Salmon phoned me. Chris Fenter phoned me. Four men of God phoned me. And based on what God said to me, I still submitted and listened. And I'm today standing where I am because I am a man under authority. I still am a man under authority. You don't have to clap for me. Clap for Jesus. There's one thing I've understood. If you want to finish this race, you need a man of God that can talk into your life. Come on, somebody in Jesus' name. Not a bishop that talks from America. A man of God that can look in your eyes. A zone pastor, a district pastor. A man of God that prays for you. That loves you enough to be truthful. That doesn't want anything from you. When I was looking for a pastor for Lady Brand. I almost made a mistake. I walked into the late And that's why I love Hatfield and I love Pretoria. Pastor Ed Raybert because he was a man that God used in my life. I honor every man of God that ever had impact in my life. Never in my life have I said a negative thing about a man of God. Because there's a principle. He that renders evil for good, evil will not depart from his house. If God uses a man to change your life, watch your words. Choose your words very, very, very carefully when you talk about him. Listen. Touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. You want to be very cautious what you say about a man of God. You want to be, or a woman of God. Very, if God used somebody to bless you or change your life, be very careful what you say. Be careful. Don't assess your pastor in jeans and a stupid shirt. That's not who we are. The Bible says he gave gifts. I said the Bible says Jesus gave gifts. He gives gifts to his church. He gives a man. So that you can stay humble. Are you listening to me, businessman? He gives a man so you can stay humble. So I walked in Pastor Ed Raybert's office. And I said, I'm thinking about a pastor from Middleburg to go to Lady Bread. He just touched his heart like this. He said, I don't have any peace about this. I said, okay. I received that word. Today people come to their pastors and they say, this is what we're doing. What do you think? I don't think anything. <laughs> I don't think anything. <laughs> God will build his church his way. And, and what you have to understand is he's going to use people. People with clay feet. Normal people. People. Dust. Shepherd boys. Maybe people that are not as literate as you or as educated as you. So that you can suck it up.
so that you can stay humble. Hello? Amen? Awful quiet in this Presbyterian church. Wel, ons sê vir die doemen nie wat hy moet doen. Geef my die skrif in die Bijbel. Ek sien nie ergens in die boek van handelinge, een komitee wat die doemen nie gaan sê wat hulle moet doen nie. Ek sien die doemen nie wat na bezigheid ons toe gaan en sê, jou geld vergaan met jou, want jy weerhou jou overgaves van die Heere. Ek sien iets anders, ek sien godelike gesag. Ek sien nie een doemen nie wat een slaaf is nie. Onlangs doen ek een begrafenis, en die, is dis soos die doemen nie, en die kerk is een slaaf. Hy moet alles doen, hy is allemaal sy slaaf. Wanneer Paulus sê, ek is een dienaar, bedoel hy nie, ek is een slaaf, nee, hy bedoel, ek is een dienaar van Godse woord. Ek bedien Godse woord in die salving in my arm, waar God my aan aangestel het. Ek bedien Godse woord met die salving wat jou leven sal verander. It's the best way I can serve you. Not to be your mate. How's it, Jack? I'm not Jack to you. Thank you very much. Hear me carefully. Your pastor is not Jack to you. You don't want him to be Jack. You don't want your pastor just to be, hey, oh, what don't you know? And, 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 and take somebody on your level. You don't. You want a man of God that you can respect. And if you're in a church where you cannot respect your pastors, you better go quickly and find a church where you can submit. And when I say submit, I mean submit. Not where you run the show, or you run the duomini, or you run the reverend, or you run the priest. Where you go and you submit, and you bring your offering, your big offering out of your business, and you give it into that church, as they did in the New Testament church. Not you start your own social welfare program. You bring your money to the church. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and they distribute it. So we need an understanding of the church that Jesus is building. It's not this loose structure. It's not this free for all. It's not this happy go lucky. It is the institution, if I can call it that, quote unquote, that will change this world. It is the hope of the world. The Bible calls the church the pillar and the ground of all truth. So don't get confused by our methodology. Understand the anointing, understand gifting, understand order, understand authority, understand your place in the body. Understand that you have to lead people, but you also have to follow. Understand you have to be under authority to be of authority. Certain basic principles. Can you say amen? amen. No, come on, say a better amen than that. Say amen. Wij ons het allemaal die geest van God. So die mense van Moses ook gesê, die maak hier die wereld oop en hy slik die mense daar in. Yes, you have the spirit of Christ, but you don't have the grace that your pastor has. You have the grace to be a businessman. You don't have the grace to be a pastor. Amen? Like, I don't have the grace to be a doctor. I mean, it's amazing in the church, people get confused. Suddenly, everybody hears for the pastor. Well, let me walk into your business, and I know nothing about your business, and I just walk in and say, today I'm making the decision here. <laughs> huh? Hello? Hello? Or today I'm performing heart surgery. Now, why are you laughing? I mean, every Christian thinks they can stand up and, and they can decide what is the way of God and what's the vision of God. Why can't I, an anointed man of God that is saved for 31 years, that have the Holy Ghost, that have fruit this long in my ministry, stand up and believe that supernaturally God will lead me to perform heart surgery on you? Why? Give me the scalpel. Give me the willing vessel. And give me a go in Jesus' name. I'll pray. Shaba, 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 shaba. I'll do my very best in Jesus' name. I'll do my best. And that's the deceit in people. They want to take the minister's role. People die in the operating theater. People die wherever they go. Because they're not under authority. They're not in structure. Because everybody thinks they can read a book and say what God is saying. No. 1 Corinthians 12, 18, the Bible says, God set the members in the body as it pleased Him. You need to be planted in a local church. Uh, Psalm 92, the Bible says, those who are planted in the house of God shall flourish in the courts of our God. In old age, they shall still flourish. You need to be in a local church, young person. If you are for four years in Bloemfontein as a student, you need to get planted in a local church. And when you go back to your hometown, you need to get planted in a local church again. There's no other way that God is going to disciple you. No other way that you're going to learn the ways of God than being under authority, planted in a local church. And every Sunday, you go to that house of God. Every Wednesday, you go to the home cell. There is no other way. If you can find a way, prove it to me from the Bible. Give me your scriptures. 
Not a letter is written to a member. Every letter in the Bible is written to the elder of the church. Not the intercessor. Not the finance committee. Not the church board. To the elder. Singular. Singular. Are you hearing me? To the elder. What does Satan do to dismantle the body? He questions authority that God invests in human beings. And he tries to discredit the people that God uses. As they did Jesus Christ. As they did Moses. As they did every apostle. Trying to discredit, to silence the voice of the man. So that God cannot move in your life. Hear me carefully. If you're a wise Christian, you will pray for your pastor. And I'm not just talking about me. I'm talking about all the pastors in South Africa. I'm talking about our district pastors, our zone pastors. I'm talking, if you come from Klipkerk, then bid for Domini on else. Gaan bid for and in finance, your last bezoek, you open like, of you word here geplant, of you gaan daar, you word geplant. And you give your tieners, you offer on the day, and you make a verschil daar waar you vanaf kom. You word geplant, you word geplant, in Jesus' name. You word geplant. Die ander klap word al minder. Dis as die waarheid kom, nee. Nee. Nee, and can the Bible yes, and everybody has the Holy Ghost, and everybody reads a book, and everybody has an opinion, and then God has his opinion. Then God says, I will build my church, and he gave, he gave gifts. What is it that he first descended, that he also ascended into the heavens, and he gave gifts unto men. He gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be uh, pastors, some to be teachers. For what? The equipping of the saints. So until Jesus comes back, you need a pastor. And if you leave this church next week, you better go and submit to another pastor. Somebody that has the authority and the final say. Amen. 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 Otherwise, you're naked. You're an embarrassment to all of us. You're illegitimate. You're outside the house. You smell. There's any toilet. Clean AC. You smelly. You don't think so because you, oh, the Lord. And you know, people can puke also. It's like, you know, some just go, ah! But you get dignified people. Pastor Clive, sorry, I can tell you a sin. <laughs> we, Pastor Clive, don't put him on an airplane with you. We were flying to Botswana to do a harvest event. Yeah, Pastor Clive sits behind me or across from me in the small little four-seater. And Pastor Henny from Kimberley sits there. Pastor Clive sits across from me and I sit here. And Pastor Clive can't handle, he gets motion sickness. I never knew it. So he didn't fill one bag, he filled two bags, but very politely so, very politely so, just like, whoop. <laughs> people, some people vomit on you very politely, just whoop. <laughs> Praise the Lord, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord, hallelujah. <laughs> and they're the most dangerous people. You know, and I don't want to gossip now, but I just want to tell you the pastor, whoop. You know, you know, praise the Lord, I love CRC, but I, I just think, you know, they don't really know much about discipleship. I, you know, you know. <laughs> so, so polite and so dignified, but it's so, it's, it's, you just listen to what's coming out. It's death and it's height and it's division and it's strife. And the bank breaks trust. But it's all, oh, you, know, you know. Let's let's pray for the poor man, Father. <laughs> I don't care how you puke. If you puke, it's bad. Before I got saved, when I called George, I really called him. Those nights. 
when I had to concentrate walking in the house, then you know you're drunk. When I had to concentrate, every Friday, Saturday, when I got home, my mother, w one, two o'clock in the morning, I'd have to concentrate. I said, okay. You know, if you have to concentrate on, on walking right, you know you're not right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'd have to go. And there, I don't know why there was always this electrical cord I'd had to climb over. It was like, you aim now. Oh, nothing wrong. <laughs> and you just think everything is fine and the whole world goes like this. Then two o'clock in the morning I'd go to the throne. George. The dangerous ones are these polite Christians. Full of poison. In the name of Christianity. I never got to the scripture. But the Bible says, in is love seen by the way you treat your brother. If you hate your brother, you are called a murderer. The Bible says, he that hates in Proverbs dissembles with his lips. He that hates dissembles. People divide. They break down. They're motivated by hate. Not the spirit of Christ. The Bible says, love covers a multitude of sin. He that loves covers a transgression. He that separates a matter divides chief friends. And the Bible says people will do these things and actually think they're doing God a favor. So deceived people become with their issues. Rick Joyner, a great man of God, I have to close, said in the last day. The church will not be attacked by the devil from without. But brother against brother. And how they, do they do it? They don't take a gun. They don't take a knife. They send a word. They talk about another brother. A home cell comes together and they say, Oh, that girl that got saved wasn't as spiritual as she made out. She backslid again. That's not the time to talk. That's the time to pray. That's the time to rally. That's the time to go recover that girl. That's the time to go weep at her feet and to win her back into the fold. Back with the love of God. Back in Jesus' name. Don't allow yourself to be separated from the body. Don't live outside the church. Don't build relationships outside of the church. I'm talking about Christianity. Amen. Father, thank you for the church. Thank you, Jesus. You said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Forgive us where we have sinned against the body. Forgive us where we have spoken words against your church, against your leaders. Forgive us where we have broken and not protected. Heal your body, I pray, O oh God. Heal your body, I pray, O oh God. Heal your church. That love may be a real thing. That the spirit of love may flow through one to the other. As you say, Jesus, by this all the world will know that we are your disciples. By the love we have one for another. A new commandment. That you love one another as I have loved you. No greater love of any man than to lay down his life for his friends. Give us a fresh understanding of brotherly love, I pray. Forgive us where we have hurt people. Forgive us where we've not been loyal. Forgive us for corrupt communication. Help us, Jesus, to be your church. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Just for a moment. Just join hands with the person next to you. If you're a lady, join hands with a lady. Don't now, I'm not saying now grab a, a girl's hand or, a, or a, another man's wife's hand. It's not what I'm saying. But just, just right where you are. If your friend sits next to you, just put your hand. Just hold that person's hand. Come on, we're almost finished here. But God's doing something. With His unity, God commands His blessing. We are the church. We are the church. The body of Christ. We are the church. Bind us together. 
with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together with love in Jesus' name. Thank you for a hedge of protection. Thank you for a fire around every congregation. Thank you that no weapon of the enemy formed against your church can prosper. Thank you, Jesus. You said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail. We speak your grace over your church. The Lordship of Jesus Christ. Thank you for a body tempered together. By the Holy Ghost, every part member doing their part. In Jesus' name. 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 We are responsible one for another. May not one get lost. May the home cells go and recover the stragglers. May they recover the backsliders. May they recover the prodigals. Give us a heart, O oh God, for your people. Give us a heart for the lost. Give us a heart for the prodigals. Give us a heart for our brother and our sister. Because if one member suffers, the whole body suffers. If one member is honored, the whole body rejoices. Give us a fresh understanding. Give us discernment of the body of Christ, I pray. In Jesus' name. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be glorified. We worship you. And we honor you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. Amen. And amen. If you receive the word tonight, come on, give him a praise offering. Hallelujah. Come on, give God thanks for the word. Give God thanks for the church. Hallelujah. We are the church. We are the Jesus revolution. We are the hope of the world. We are the answer to this generation's problems. We have the answer. Jesus Christ in our midst. United we will stand. Together we will do more. Let us rise as one and be fiercely loyal in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Take your